This video is all about thermochemistry, chapter 9 within your textbook. Let's look over the topics we'll be covering. We're going to discuss some energy basics. We're going to go through the laws of thermodynamics. We're going to discuss endothermic versus exothermic. We're going to learn how to calculate heat energy as well as specific heat. We're going to talk about calorimetry. We're going to run through calorie calculations and talk about heat stoichiometry. Let's start by discussing the forms and types of energy. Energy is known as the ability to do work. The units for energy can vary. The unit we will use most often will be joules or kilojoules. And then of course another unit of energy is a calorie. The three main types of energy are kinetic energy, potential energy, and radiant energy. Kinetic energy is energy of motion, and some subcategories that fit here include thermal energy, wave energy, and light energy. Potential energy is stored energy. And some subcategories for that are chemical, gravitational, and elastic. Some of these are primarily covered in a physics class. Our focus will be thermal and chemical energy. And finally, we have radiant light, or energy, which is created by the movement of charged particles. And the example you're responsible for knowing is sunlight. This slide should primarily be review of a previous science class, possibly back in high school. Let's talk about some more definitions. Heat is defined as the total internal energy of molecular motion in a substance. It is an extensive property, so it's dependent on amount. The more you have of something, the more heat it could potentially have. Temperature is a measure of the average energy of molecular motion in a substance. So it is an intensive property or independent of amount. Temperature is 86 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the average energy of all of the substances around that location. Finally, thermal energy is the kinetic energy associated with the random motion of atoms and molecules. Down here is a diagram that does a really nice job of differentiating heat and temperature. It says, although both beakers below have the same temperature of 100 degrees, the beaker on the right over here has twice the amount of heat because it has twice the amount of water. Let's continue with some definitions before we get into the math. Thermodynamics is defined as the study of energy, work, and heat. It is governed by three laws. As you can see, the three laws are listed below. The first law of thermodynamics says that energy cannot be created nor destroyed, only transferred and transformed. The second law says that the universe spontaneously becomes more disordered. And finally, the third law says that the disorder of a perfect, pure crystal at zero Kelvin is zero. These could make very good multiple choice questions on an upcoming test. There are two major types of heat energy. We have endothermic and exothermic reactions. Endo kind of sounds like the word enter. Or exo kind of sounds like exit, which will be helpful in differentiating the two. In an endothermic reaction, heat is absorbed or added. In an exothermic reaction, heat is released, so it's exiting. In an endothermic reaction, energy is going to be found on the reactant side, 
because it's being added to the reaction. And because the heat is being absorbed, the outside of the system is going to feel cold. The reactants require energy to form products, as you can see in the example. Some good examples of this would be when ice melts, okay, it needs to absorb energy to melt. And also, if you create a cold pack, so like an instant cold pack is absorbing energy and feels cold. Exothermic reactant, or excuse me, reactions, instead energy is a product because it's leaving the reaction. Therefore, the reaction is going to feel hot. We say that the reactants have extra or too much energy, so they have to get rid of some of it. And you'll notice the heat is on the product side here. Heat is usually provided as kilojoules. And then some examples here would be anything that's burning or the formation of a hot pack. Endothermic reactions, we usually represent this with a delta H, which actually stands for enthalpy. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But endothermic reactions have a positive delta H because we're adding heat to the reaction. And our exothermic reactions have a negative delta H. That negative indicates that the heat is leaving the reaction. That will be important later on. Let's continue discussing some important terms before we get to the math. Specific heat versus heat capacity. Both of these are terms that are important when it comes to thermochemistry. Let's define them. The definitions are now posted. Specific heat is defined as the heat energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree. It is an intensive property okay, because it's independent of amount. It's always the same for a given substance. The one that's really important for you to know is the specific heat of water. We usually use a lowercase c to represent specific heat. So the C of water is 4.184 joules per gram degrees Celsius. That's important. The heat capacity of something instead is the heat energy needed to raise the temperature of an entire substance by one degree. So it's an extensive property. The heat capacity is going to increase as mass increases. So if we're talking about a cup of water versus a pool of water, for an example, they both are going to have the same specific heat. However, the pool is going to have a much greater heat capacity than the cup because there's more in it. Heat capacity is usually represented with an uppercase C and will vary depending upon how much you have of something. A couple more definitions and then we'll do a little bit of math. A calorie is defined as the energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. So you'll notice that one calorie right here equals 4.184 joules, which matches perfectly with the specific heat of water. One food calorie is actually a thousand real calories. So that 2,000 calorie diet that we talk about really is a two million real calorie diet. Interesting. Now, you should be able to use these or recognize these as conversion factors. 
Okay, which means we should be able to answer the question below using dimensional analysis. So the question asks how many calories are in 35,600 joules? And then it asks how many food calories is this? Please pause the video and using proper dimensional analysis, answer these questions. The answers are posted, so hopefully you decided to set it up accordingly. You have to divide because we need joules to cancel out, so it needs to go top and bottom. And then you would round for sig figs and end up with three because your given is three sig figs. And then the same thing for the second part of the problem. You're really dividing by a thousand, moving your decimal three spaces. And then the abbreviation for food calories is a capital C. AL. Let's continue with our math and our calculations. Let's discuss how to calculate heat energy. Here's your equation. It is Q equals MC delta T. We're going to label what each of those are. If the lowercase Q really bothers you, I know it does some of my students. Feel free to replace it with an uppercase one. Q stands for heat energy in this equation. And the unit that we'll primarily be using is the joule. M, of course, stands for mass. And the unit you'll be primarily using is grams. C stands for specific heat. and its unit is joules divided by grams degrees Celsius. And delta T is always the final temperature minus the initial temperature. Triangle means change. It's always final minus initial. And the unit, of course, will be degrees C. Technically, you could be asked to solve for any piece in the equation. Most often we'll be talking about water, and you'll not be provided with the specific heat of water. That's something you're going to want to know. So that 4.184 is what you'll use. But because you can potentially be asked about any variable, you can also turn this equation into a triangle. So Q goes on top, and then MC delta T on the bottom. And then you can cover up what you're looking for and solve the problem accordingly and avoid doing algebra if you'd like. Let's go over this practice problem. It says how much heat, that's going to be your Q, is released when 50 grams, that's going to be your mass, of water. So we know that our specific heat is going to be the 4.184. If the temperature goes from 50 degrees to 76, so initially temp is 50, the final temp is 76. I tend to do this first and then plug everything into my equation. So 76 minus 50 will give you 26 degrees. And then I'll plug into my Q equals MC delta T. So Q equals 50 times, remember, that specific heat you need to know for water, times our change in temperature. And when I solve this out and round for significant figures, which is only one, so not very good, you initially get this, which you would have to round down to 5,000. And the unit, of course, is joules because we're looking for Q. In the next video, we will conclude this PowerPoint and you'll have the opportunity to do some practice with this as well as additional math.